welcome to the FBTV Weekly Highlight Show. We're out at Lennon Park for this Capital League One catch-up match between the hosts, Grain Stissels. We see them going through their final paces. And the visitors tonight, Pine Rivers. And it's Pine Rivers with possession. Played on there by Usher in the direction of Scott. Gives the defender the slip. And Simons is beaten at his near post. And Pine Rivers have recorded the opening goal here inside the first four minutes. Usher, ball on here for Scott. Simons can't hold on to it. And Scott with the second bite of the cherry puts it away and gives his side a handy 1-0 lead. Here come Grange now. Zinnis. On here for Adamson. Adamson now inside the box. Walsh makes the save. Danger not over here for Pine Rivers and Usher. We'll make sure of it at the end of the day. Plays it down the right wing. Now let's have a look at here. Uh, Adamson shot on goal. Walsh makes himself big. And then Domofsky shot straight into the Pine Rivers defender. There's Domofsky. Playing it on for the advantage of Adamson now. He's in a one-on-one -on -one here with Walsh. Adamson rounds the keeper. And Grange Stissel have found the equaliser on the quarter hour mark. So well worked movement from inside their defensive territory. This time Adamson goes one better against Jonathan Walsh and puts his side on level footing. Throw in from Reese Hornby. Now Pereira. Once again, Walsh is committed, had to be accurate. Goal kick. The final results. Lara Lee in conversation there about a potential foul. Walsh sends this one long deep into his side's attacking territory. Grange eventually deal with it. Domofsky round Roy. Now Domofsky zeroes in on goal, plays it square. Grange this will hit the lead midway through the first half and a good little jig there from Stuart Somerville. Dennis Domofsky. Played square for Somerville. He makes no mistake. Pine Rivers caught short again in their defensive unit. But now looking to find an equaliser of their own as it was played on there by Moffat. Claims of handball. Not given by referee Lara Lieb. And again, another counter-attack there for Grange Thistle. Now let's see if we can pick this up. Well, I don't think there was any claims there. If there was anything, maybe the arm over the shoulder of the Pine Rivers player. Meanwhile, Grange in another goal-scoring opportunity, punched away by Walsh. Domofsky, not too far away, takes a deflection off a defender. And all Grange since that opening pine of his goal. And into the notebook for that challenge. Referee calling out the Grange Sissel player there. Getting back to his feet, surely, but slowly. Chance here for Pine Rivers just before half time. Simons attempts to punch away, hacked away in the end. Usher will get it here for Pine Rivers. Will be Grange who perhaps find a goal here. Somerville. Somerville. Buys himself some room. Great little finish there from Stuart Somerville. And the yellow card's been dished out as well for dissent against Tom Usher, it looks like. 
So Stuart Somerville doing it all himself here. Across the face of goal. That'll be a goal of the month contender. Walsh is left flat-footed. And Grange Thistle take a 3-1 lead into the half-time break. Early on in the second half, Piner is looking to fight back once more. Usher. Now for Bernardi. Loops one in the direction of the far post. Over the bar there from Scott. Bernardi. In towards the penalty spot, dealt with by the Thistle defenders. Heavy challenge there in the background. Play allowed to continue. Good ball work here from uh, Thistle as they push the ball forward. And here is Adamson. Adamson scores the fourth for Grange Thistle. Once again, from inside their defensive territory, Pereira on for Adamson. He's pretty much going to create a one-on-one -on -one opportunity here with Walsh. Krishnil Roy comes at the last minute to try and save the day. He's unable to do so. And Grange Sissel comfortably ahead now. Freestone. Edward leaves it for Bernardi. And Smith can't put that one away. One by Thistle once more. Domofsky on there for Adamson. Saved by Walsh. And Piner has clear their line. Moffat. Now Dent. Plenty numbers back here for Thistle. Ball eventually into the box. Freestone. Well, he couldn't control it. There was a reason he couldn't control it. This will have given away a penalty here late. Now the ball's played in. Let's spot the offence that's occurred here. And that time Lara Lee has detected the handball. So Ben Smith here with a chance for a consolation. He puts it away. But it's going to be... All too late here for Pine River as they trail by two goals in stoppage time. Finding to find one here to perhaps help the goal difference though. The visitors. Smith goes himself. Impotent shot at the end of it really. And that'll do it. Grange Thistle have won this catch-up match against Pine Rivers by four goals to two. So let's take you through Capital League One after those catch-up matches. If we just saw, Grange Thistle defeat a Pine Rivers 4-2. Brisbane Knights were losers at home to Southside Eagles, while Moggle defeated Turinga. So the table after all that, no change in the top four positions. Grange Thistle move into fifth, Southside Eagles into sixth, while Moggle move into seventh. A bit of a gap developing between them and Brisbane Knights, five points between seventh and eighth. Two catch-up matches in Capital League 2, where the gap comprehensive 4-0 winners against Brisbane Force, while Acacia Ridge continued their winning ways, 3-1 against New Farm. So that means the gap and Acacia Ridge still on top of the table, three-point leaders over Western Spirit, and then a further four points back to Oxley United. Capital League 3 and a late goal saw Ridge Hills draw with Barden Latrobe. So that result doesn't affect the table at all. Both sides still in the bottom two. The league leaders, Virginia United, one point over to Wong and then a further six-point break to Tarragindi Tigers and then Clairvaux in fourth position. A full round in Capital League four as round 10 played out. St George Willowong were two one winners against Logan Metro. North Brisbane four one over Greenbank. Deception Bay three one against Logan Village. The big scores continued to rack up. 10-0 winners were Bethania against Brighton. Sanford Rangers 13-0 over Logan City. While the surprise between Springfield United and Caboolture, Caboolture getting a last minute equaliser to get a point out of the affair while Kangaroo Point Rovers had the bye. So Bethania continue to lead the way on 24 points. 
Sanford move up into second, St George Willawong into third, Deception Bay in fourth while that slip up sees Kabulcha go down to fifth. One match played out in the Mount Franklin Women's Premier League, Annalee defeated Kapalabar 3-1 in a catch-up match, and that means that they move to the top of the table on goal difference over Peninsula Power. Logan Lightning just one point back, so too a Mitchelton, and a five-point gap between fourth and fifth place, those top four really clearing out at the moment. So next time on FBTV over the coming week, what a beauty this is going to be. Looking forward to this one. It's round five from the Westfield FFA Cup. It's a blockbuster at Heath Park as Eastern Suburbs host the PlayStation 4 NPL Queensland Brisbane Strikers from the Flight Centre Premier League next weekend. Eastern Suburbs again at home, this time to Peninsula Power. On the Highlight Show, Capital League 1 action, Wolves hosting Brisbane Knights. And from the Mount Franklin Women's Premier League, it's Round 10 action, The Gap and Olympic FC. Yeah.